Acts chapter 27, verse 18 onwards. Because we were being severely battered by the storm, they began to jettison the cargo the next day. On the third day, they threw the ship's tackle overboard with their own hands. For many days, neither sun nor stars appeared, and the severe storm kept raging. Finally, all hope was fading that we would be saved. Since they had not, since they had been without food for a long time, Paul then stood up among them and said, You men should have followed my advice not to sail from Crete and sustain this damage and loss. Now I, I, I urge you to take courage, because there will be no loss of any of your lives, but only of the ship. For last night an angel of the Lord I belong to and serve stood by me and said, Don't be afraid, Paul. It is necessary for you to appear before Caesar. And indeed, God has graciously given you all those who are sailing with you. So take courage, men, because I believe that God, I believe God that it will be just the way it was told to me. I'll also read uh, verses 33 onwards, the same chapter. When it was about daylight, Paul urged them all to take food, saying, Today is the 14th day that you have been, with, been waiting and going without food, having eaten nothing. So I urge you to take some food, for this is for your survival, since none of you will lose a hair from your head. After he said these things and had taken some bread, he gave thanks to God in the presence of them all, and he broke it and he began to eat. They all were encouraged and took food themselves. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful morning that you have given us. Lord, that you have held the rain back so we can... Come here, Lord, on this morning that we can come and worship you. We thank you, Lord, for your presence. We thank you for your grace upon each one of our lives. Lord, you are our shelter, Lord. Lord, you are our stronghold. You are our rock. You are our deliverer, Lord. I pray, Lord, that as we come to you, that we will go away encouraged this morning. And every time we come to you, Lord, in prayer and in the word, we pray, Spirit of God, that you would lead us and guide us. Thank you, Father, that you are here in our midst this morning. We thank you for your presence that is always there, leading us and guiding us. Thank you for going to speak to us this morning. Holy Spirit, I pray that you lead us, open our hearts, open our ears, Lord, so that we can hear the truths and so that we can be changed. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. So a couple of weeks back, we saw about the topic called learning to be humble. So another topic that I th really think, at least I needed to learn a lot, was to come out of discouragement and to be encouraged. Uh, it is very easy to be discouraged. Very easy to be discouraged. We live in an age of discouragement. You turn the news, you know, you see only things that are negative. Like, you know, like, so many people are affected with COVID. I'm, it's so true. But there are so many people who are doing very well. We don't see reports of that. People got, children got into an accident. But there are so many people who went to school, so many children who went to school and came back home safe. There are so many good things that are happening. You know, the whole earth is filled with God's glory. So there are so many things that God is doing. And when you see the news, you know, when you see the negative side of things and when, like negativity is always like extrapolated, you know, it's like it's published, it's sensationalized, negative things. You do something good for like many years and one small negative incident, you know, it will be in the news. And even the news channels also, they use it, you know, they call, threaten people, say, hey, I'm going to publish a news about you. Uh, do you want to give me money or, uh, should I, um, or should I publish, I mean, should I broadcast it? It's happened even to our ministry. So there's this negativity that is all around us. You know, so we should understand that. So there's something in us that is drawn to negative things. There's something in us. I don't know what it is. Maybe because of the fall, because of Adam's nature in us, that we are drawn to negativity. Like, you know, like when we, when sometimes when fear comes, we are so paralyzed. We are like, we are focused on what, what bad things are going to happen. What's the worst? We are thinking about the worst scenario. 99 good things that God wants to do in our life and we are focusing on that one negative thing. 
I've seen some people, you know, who always are like, you know, talking about like what's not working in their life. What's not working? It's, it's, it's. So I feel like, you know, where does this person get encouragement from? So we have a, the Bible says, we have a God of encouragement. We have scripture that gives us encouragement. I want you to turn there, Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15, verse 4. <clears throat> Romans chapter, verse, uh, chapter 15, verse 4 and 5. For whatever was written in the past was written for our instruction, so that we may have hope through endurance, through the encouragement from the scriptures. What comes from the scriptures? Encouragement from the scriptures. And the verse 5, it says, Now may the God who gives endurance and encouragement. So two things you see here. So you see, we have a God of encouragement, and who do we have? We have the scripture that gives encouragement. And that's the thing, you know, the glorious thing. It's about, like, you know, not, if, if, you're, if I'm not able to spend time with God, if I'm not in the, my scriptures, knowing about God, where will I get encouragement? That's my question. Because we, are, we could be so busy with so many things and like so many things and going on in our life and, and, and the hurry is the disease, you know, that is flowing through the whole world. Hurry is a disease, I would say. Like we are always in a hurry. We are like always busy. And, and when we are in a hurry, like you know, you see the, 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 the reports that come out of the Western world that has the highest amount of wealth, it has the highest amount of education, highest amount of resources, the infrastructure, everything is the highest in the Western countries. But you also see the highest amount of discouragement, the highest amount of depression, the highest amount of fear comes from there. And so something is not right. Something is not right. So, so here, we have a God who says, hey, I want to lead you. I want to encourage you. And we have God's word, which is, it says, it's, it's very clearly says, the Bible says, it's all written. Everything is written. It says, for who? For, for what? For your encouragement, it says. For my encouragement. So every time I am I'm discouraged, by the things that are happening in my life, the things that are happening around my life, what people are trying to do in my life, what I get into trouble sometimes, you know, there is this discouragement. And, and then we come to a God you know, who says, hey, I want to encourage you. So today, this morning, you know, when I say learning to encourage, it also means two things. It's learning to receive encouragement. And when I learn to receive encouragement, I can encourage other people. So, so that's the most important thing. So we are going to split this message into two. The first part will be learning to receive encouragement from God and from his spirit and from his word. And the second part would be how I can be a channel of God to give encouragement to other people. Okay, so that's two things we want to see today. So here in chapter 27, Apostle Paul was on a ship. You know, he's in chains. He's a prisoner. He's in chains. He, along with 267 people on this huge ship, they are traveling. They were supposed to travel. It was supposed to be a uh, half a day trip, you know, from Crete to, uh, to another place, you know, fr from, from uh, I don't, I'm not getting that name. It's uh, from that island, Cyprus Island, from one point to another point. They said, let's, uh, let's go to this place, you know, hang out for three months because the winter is bad and uh, you know the Mediterranean Sea, it's known for bad winters. And like the waters are very troubled waters. So they're supposed to go to a short distance around the, like let's say for example, like, like Trivandrum to Chennai. You know, it's like almost like that. But what happened? They get launched because of the wind. Those days, you know, they don't have as much control like this. You know, because of the wind, you know, I'm, not, I'm just summarizing what's in chapter 27. It gets launched into this open ocean. And the whole ship is going, it's, it's the wind is taking it. And people are afraid of their lives. People are scared for their lives. But how many believers are there on the boat? Just like in Jonah's story, there's only <laughs> many unbelievers, but one you know, person who was going against God's will and God had to dump Jonah out of the boat. This is the reverse of Jonah. It's like you know, there's only one righteous man. And also I think Luke was there, you know, he's the writer. So there are only two believers out of 267 unbelievers in this ship. And so what's happening? People are trying to save themselves. People are trying to do all these things. But the boat is, the ship is going deeper and deeper into the ocean. It's going completely opposite direction. And the winds and blowing and, and they are not able to uh, manage their life. And so they are full of fear. Full of fear now. 
and then the bible says you know for many days neither sun nor star appeared so just imagine going in complete darkness almost many days it don't it doesn't say how many days and then it says finally all hope was fading that we would be saved all hope is gone hope is lost it's a hopeless situation and they have been without food also for a long time verse 21 says without food no sun no light all hope is gone what do you do because i'm sure how many people had families there that had back home and they were thinking about their children thinking about their family and all that and paul gets up apostle paul gets up you know he says verse 22 chapter 27 verse 22 it says now i urge you to take courage because there will be no loss of any lives but only of the ship he says he boldly stands and says hey i know that the ship might be destroyed but none of us will die and he says you know very i mean bible is really like you know sometimes good sense of humor you know take courage he says be of good cheer he says what i am going through storms no i mean no, no light of the day and there is no food i mean we are not even able to eat food and you are saying be of good cheer you are saying take courage how can i take courage where can courage come you know how can we give courage to people how can paul boldly stand and stand in front of 265 men and say this how can he say this how can where is this boldness come from where does this courage come from in a discouraging and a hopeless situation answer is in verse 23 answer is in verse 23 it says for last night an angel of the lord i belong to and serve stood by me amen who stood by me the angel of the lord i belong to and i serve see amazing perspective of apostle paul i i belong to this god i serve this god and he stood with me amen when when things are going against our plan who stands with us jesus stands with us and this is not the first time i'm going to give you some examples so he says christ so okay good um he stood with me and it says god told me i have to stand before caesar see god's plan for us you know in the storm is something beyond our understanding we cannot understand so so the storm is going on and all these things are happening and god is saying hey this is my plan for you you have to stand in front of caesar who nero nero was the emperor at that time you have to stand in front of him and so all the fear is gone because he knows that god is going to make him stand and then also god says another thing god has graciously graciously given you all that are sailing with you you know that means like you know i am going to save the life of this how many people 265 people so because of one righteous man how many people are saved 265 people are saved. because of one righteous person in a family because of one righteous person a nation can be changed because of one righteous person a colony a neighborhood can be changed and takes only one person dear brothers and sisters many times we think oh man i don't have anything i don't have anything to do yes you qualify when you say i lord i cannot that's when you qualify in god's kingdom when you think that you have something to offer to god that's a very dangerous place to be in when you say lord i have nothing to offer that's when god calls you it's like okay i can choose you now because you have told you have given the password the password is lord i have nothing to offer i need your strength and so paul here you know he was afraid because verse 23 it says verse 24 it says don't be afraid paul i mean the great man of god he was afraid obviously when you have uh, troubles in life and you have storms in life and your things are going not according to plan there will be fear there will be fear fear is fear is not something that you know that that is like oh christians oh, you, oh are you fearful oh you, you are a christian and you have fear that's that's silly because here apostle paul had fear because that's why god's god come and he stands there and says don't be afraid paul because paul was afraid so there's a fearful paul he receives the promise of god the assurance of god then he gets the boldness to stand amen so 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 he is fearful he receives the word of god and he he receives the encouragement from god and he starts to what he starts to what encourage other people 
So he says, verse 25, verse 25, he says, So take courage, men, because I believe God that it will be just the way it was told to me. Verse 25. He says, So take courage, be of good cheer. Cheer up, he says, because I believe God. What does he do? I believe God. Believing in God's promises. Believing in God's promises for our life. And that's the thing. When God says something, yes, Lord, I believe it. Because faith is the most powerful thing on this earth. Even a small mustard seed amount of faith is enough. The faith is the most powerful thing. Don't compare your faith to other people. Oh, brother John's faith and my faith and all that. No, 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 no. Just forget about all that. That's just putting the faith in the faithful one. Just, in, in, just that even if it's small amount of faith, let it be fully on God. And so here we see Paul saying, I believe God and he will do what he said he will do. Amen. So that is the God that we serve. And so we receive encouragement from God in our tough times and we are able to encourage other people. And so we need to learn this. You know, this is not comes, it doesn't come by nature because by nature, I am a very negative person. My nature, I tend to look at how things will not work. What will make things not to work? You know, maybe because I've studied finance or something, I don't know. I'm always looking at the negative side of things, negative things of people, negative things that how things will not work out. And so God has to teach us, God has to bring us from a place of negativity, from, from, from fear to a place of encouragement. And as we go to God, you know, he does that. And see, all these examples in, in Paul's life. You can, you, the scriptures are there. You can go and read it later. So I've just covered the first one. When Paul was not sure about his future. When Paul was sitting there, you know, in, in, in one of the prisons. And he was not sure about his future. You know, chapter 22, you don't need to turn there. I'll turn there and I'll read it for you. He says, again, verse 11. He was, he was sitting in a prison room and, and it says the Lord, the following night, the Lord stood by him, by him means by Paul and said, have courage for as you have testified about me in Jerusalem, so it's necessary for you to testify in Rome. So again, God says, have courage, have courage, fear not, don't be afraid, don't give in to fear, don't let fear dominate you. Don't give in to discouragement because it's a, it's, a, it's a vicious cycle. You know, it's like it keeps going down and down. Like when you, once you start with the fear, it starts going down and down. Once you start with the negativity in your life, you know, it starts going down. There's, there's no way you can come out of it. And people are paralyzed by fear. Fear tends to magnify. It's like, oh man, what is going to happen? What are going to, what's going to happen to my children? What is going to happen to my future? What's going to happen to my job? What if, uh, if I lose my job? What if I, someone passes away? What if, some, if I lose someone in my life? What's going to happen? And, and it's paralyzing. It's paralyzing. And it, and it makes us make some bad choices. It makes us into, it takes us to, down a path of wrong decisions many times. And it's very real. Sometimes, you know, even mature Christians, mature Christians, Christians who've been for a long time, for 10 years Christians, you know, who struggle with this. Struggle with this. Even other day, like, you know, like, um, I, was just, I was just going, you know, I was traveling and uh, uh, there, there was some, just this thought and just normal day, you know, just wonderful, beautiful day. And then suddenly the fear comes. You know, like the, the fear comes and you start to think like, okay, what if I'm dead? Just, just that thought, that's all. What if I'm dead? Like, you know, who will take care of my children? Who will take care of my family? How will my children grow up? All these thoughts. I mean, just for, for me, as I'm just normally traveling uh, in, in an auto other day. And so I had to just stop and say like, hey, where is this coming from? Hey, who took me to that place? Why is this fear starting to come and it's replaying? Sometimes, you know, fear replays, like, like rewind, play, rewind, play. And, and, and that's the thing, you know, it's, we go into the cycle. I know some of you here are probably laughing right now. 50% of you people are laughing because you have not gone through this. And there are, I, I, meet like, I meet like so many people during the week that have gone through this. And as a church, we need to be there for them. Because people who have not gone through this, you know, that this rewind play, rewind play of fear, they find it very silly. They'll be like, ah, you don't have enough faith. 
you don't have uh, i mean like this is real i'm talking about and so our job as a church and as a church family is to is to is to encourage those people encourage them in the lord bring them in the ways of the lord not just give one word answers not give dialogues punch dialogues that's what movies do in one movie in a movie like you know one song the person will become like a, from a beggar to a Uh, richest man in the world that is movies that is all it's all fantasy not reality reality is there are people around us among us who are going through this fear and discouragement and 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 as a church it's our responsibility as a people of god it's our responsibility to walk with them there's a bible there's a verse called paraklesis that means encouragement or comfort means paraklesis what is greek in para para means come near call near call someone near and walk with them what's the holy spirit's job he's a paracletos that he comes and he counsels us and that's the thing dear brothers and sisters you know here we see apostle apostle paul receiving encouragement repeatedly in his life when it's a, when it's at the lowest point of his life when he when he was like you know when he was trying to he, he got an opportunity to speak in front of jewish people and he got an opportunity and he's like preparing because in romans chapter 9 you don't need to turn there it says i have a zeal for god for my brethren from my jewish brethren that i will i will be cursed so that they can know god he has such a passion for the jewish people for his countrymen to know god and finally he gets this opportunity to share about all the before the jewish leaders the high priests and all and at that time he blows it like you know he 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 said something and then there is a big uh drama that happens and or right that happens he could not finish his message he could not finish his sermon he could not finish his evangelism and at that time you know chapter 23 verse uh, 11 the, that's when you know like the 23 verse 11 that's when i read that passage he said have courage god said hey it's all right everything is going to be okay it's all right take courage this is our god who's saying this he's saying this take courage you know he's saying this to paul he's saying this to us to to each one of us here and and that's the thing paul was you know another time you know chapter 18 you know paul was afraid of attacks you know because he was in in a city called corinth and the city of corinth you know there's he's repeatedly been dragged and beaten and bloody and he's been beaten 30 39 times on the back bloodied back you know still not he- healed and he comes to another place and they beat him up again and they're waiting to kill him the next day morning and at that time also god said in a chapter 18 i'll re- i'll read that you know chapter 18 it says don't be afraid again see don't be afraid to apostle paul this is god speaking to apostle paul a man of faith a missionary he says don't be afraid but keep on speaking don't be silent for i am with you no one will lay a hand on you to hurt you amen so it says don't be afraid keep on speaking don't be silent for i'm with you and no one will lay a hand on you and he could have said lord <laughs> then why didn't you protect me in all the past three cities i was beaten like black and blue but now you are coming and saying lord no one will lay a hand on you no he didn't ask that he didn't ask that question he didn't give to negativity he didn't look at us he could have immediately said you know if i were at paul's place and god said nobody will lay a hand on you i would have immediately said lord what about last week what about last month why did they beat me up and that's the thing here apostle paul says he de- and then the verse 11 it says in chapter 18 he stayed there year and a half teaching the word of god among them amen he's teaching the word of god he's going on teaching year and a half putting time to teach the word of god and that's the most important thing to teach the word of god and when when the, in my life my life changed when i started to put time into the word of god to to know the word of god to know the god of the word and the word of god and 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 that's when something's happening the holy spirit is working and this changing there's like there there's so many things that's emotional things the baggages everything is starting to go away the hurts and the fear and the and the and the, and the discouragement and the negativity it's all starting to go away and you're feeling this new freedom in christ and you're starting to free and then your relationships are getting better your family life is getting better your personal thought life is getting better and you're like what am i doing there should be something that is changing me and that's the word of god like i said you know the scripture the encouragement that comes from scripture and when we are are are, are going to the source of encouragement when we are going through the source of encouragement we will be encouraged 
and whatever that situation like you see specifically god is speaking to paul in certain instances when he when he's fear when he's full of fear god says don't be afraid when he's when he's down in courage god says take courage i mean so god knows there's a word for you specifically for each day specifically for each moment that you're going through there's a word that god has for you and that's why you know when we go to god's word we are like lord what is it that you want to speak to me today what is it that you want to tell me lord today and when when that word of god comes and and it and it comes and he he comes and he speaks to you and you know he he's coming and he's working in you and he's like wow man thank you lord and you can go on you know go on with that day and so so there is also another thing you know if you go to the next slide you know not only not only apostle paul look at the life of jesus you know every time i like to go to the life of jesus you know it's when like last time when we talked about humility where did we want to learn humility from jesus he said learn from me and also jesus you know jesus many times he said take courage or be of good cheer take courage or be of good cheer i mean what an amazing statement from jesus and 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 this is very very important that we notice like in matthew chapter 9 verse 2 and 22 in matthew chapter 9 verse 2 and 22 if you see there are two people who are who are who are broken in their life you know like hopeless again that hopeless situation discouraged probably he says there's a, a paralytic lying on a stretcher hopeless right a paralytic man lying on a stretcher seeing their faith the people the people the faith of the people who brought this paralytic man jesus told the paralytic man have courage son your sins are forgiven amen uh, psalm 32 it says how happy is the man whose sins are forgiven how happy is the man how blessed is the man whose sins are forgiven that is the greatest joy in our life that all our past our regrets our failures our, our disappointments our losses god is wiping it clean and says hey i want to give you a new start and that and that's the thing you know jesus says hey i want to give you a new start your sins are forgiven be happy be cheerful and that's what jesus says and then the same chapter verse 22 same same chapter verse 22 again this this lady you know that that she has this bleeding issue for 12 years she says if i touch his robe i'll be made well jesus turned and saw her he said have courage daughter what did he say have courage daughter and in that uh, in the in the verse 2 what is jesus saying have courage son so so he's covered everybody he says have courage son have courage daughter i mean what would uh, will you believe it only when jesus comes in front of you and physically says that or do you want to believe it today by faith he says have courage have courage i mean courage is one of the, the beautiful things you know when it is come from when it comes from god you know when we go out in courage to do certain things where things are not right things are messed up and god gives you courage to change those things and and it could be any place and we will talk about that so and then also in matthew chapter 14 verse 24 the disciples are scared that that it's jesus it's walking on the water and he says have courage be of good cheer don't be afraid don't be afraid everything is going to be all right what if god, god comes to be every day morning and he says everything is going to be all right what if he has to say that what if he has to say that our, will not our lives be changed when he says everything is going to be all right whatever we're thinking whatever hopeless situation it is and whatever it is that we are going through when god comes and says that and that's what we see in scripture that that that's encouragement after encouragement every page we turn every page we turn and not only that we have encouragement from from the holy spirit who is in us like for example i told you just that instance you know when i started to feel that negative negative thoughts you know started to come and like i, I stopped and like who is this is this from god or is this from me and then i immediately realized it is my fear that is speaking i don't want to listen to my fear i don't want to listen to my fear i don't want to project my fear into the future i want to listen to the spirit of god who is dwelling in me and i started to listen lord I, I, I immediately you know stopped and i said lord this is not me speaking this is my fear speaking my fear is speaking now lord i want you to speak right now what are you speaking lord and you know 
and, and the word of God, you know, God reminds you some scripture at that time and that fear is gone. It's like, ah, man, yes, I got it. I got that word. You know, I don't know what, what verse that came to my mind that day or what word from God came to me my, that day during my negative thought. You know, is that, that one thing I know that I was so filled with joy. I was so filled with assurance. That's all it is, right? I mean, it, it's gone. I didn't let, let the fear play on. I didn't let the fear rewind and play, rewind and play. I didn't do that because we have an encouraging God, a God who's encouraging us, who's leading us and guiding us. And so that is the thing, dear brothers and sisters. What a, what a gift it is for us. You know, what a great gift it is to have a God who's encouraging us, the Spirit of God who's in us, who's leading us to the truth. And we have a bunch of people around us who are encouraging us. I mean, I mean, just what, could, what more could we ask? And that's the thing. Don't give in to fear. Don't give in to this, you know, this negative mindset. And sometimes, you know, even with relationships with people, you know, we get discouraged when people say something about this. Like, I, I, I think I don't, I don't think I told in English service, maybe in Tamil service, I swear. Like, you know, something, someone did something uh, that, was not, that was not pleasant to me. So I went in, like, you know, and that next day morning, I woke up, I'm like, I woke, woke up with that, that, that whole thought is like, oh man, why, why are they telling this to me? Why are they doing this to me? And I'm, I'm filled with uh, discouragement and pain and, 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 and all these things, I'm going through this in the morning. And then I, 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 I prayed and, and, and I uh, went and still I came back in the evening and it's still there because you feel that restlessness in your heart and it's still not going and I'm asking the Lord, Lord, give me a word, speak to me because this thing is still bothering me in my heart and I don't want to live in that place. I want to live in a place of freedom. I don't want to live in this place of struggle and inner struggle. And then the next day I told my wife about that and we were praying and then the next day it's almost like, like a sun just rose you know, from darkness. And you know, God said, you know, don't focus on those negative aspects of that person. That person has 95% good. There are 5% that's probably something and he attacked you, he said something to you. Focus on the good. Focus on the 95, not on the 5. And then I started to think, okay, yeah, I mean, that person is a good person. And I was so bitter against that person because I was focusing on the 5% that was negative. And that's the thing, you know, and I was able to immediately come out of it because of the encouragement that God gives. God gives to, God tells us, you know, focus on the good. Focus on the good. And fear also does. What, why do fear comes? Because we focus on the bad, the focus on the worst case scenario. We focus on what could go wrong. And that's what happens. And uh, here also in, in, in John chapter 16 verse 33, the, the disciples are fear, I mean, full of fear because Jesus is going away. He said, I'm going away to my father's house and I'll send someone to you. And they are full of fear. But he says, be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. Be of good cheer, I overcome the world. And this is the thing, dear brothers and sisters. So as we are walking in the Lord, we receive this nutrition every time. We need this nutrition. We need this spiritual strength from him every moment as we are walking, as we are working, as we get into this mode of fear or we get into this mode of discouragement. We need, that's the time we are most vulnerable because the time of fear and the f time of discouragement, anything can, go, anything can happen. We can make some wrong decisions. We start to uh, sit there and we are stuck, we, our mouth will start so talking some things and we will start uh, thinking that the things about my past that used to happen, especially the triggers of my past, like, you know, um, something has happened in my life in the past and, and, and I see this, oh man, will that thing happen again? That fear will come. Will that thing happen again? I experienced this 15 years ago and will that thing happen again, again? And see, that is the thing, it's paralyzing. It is paralyzing. So, so we have a God who's encouraging us. Like I gave you examples of how Apostle Paul was being encouraged at the lowest point in his life, at the time when he was about to be attacked, at the time when he was in fear. And we see Jesus, our encourager, you know, he's encouraging people saying, hey, be of good cheer, take courage, and all that. Okay, so now we come to the next part, the second part of the message. The first part is we know that we are being encouraged by the Holy Spirit, by God, by scriptures and people around us. Okay, and the next thing is 
uh, next, next slide please is to encourage one another can you go to the next slide so encouraging one another okay so this is god's call to god's children why i mean god's not saying hey you encourage people no you are already encouraged it is more better to give than to receive <laughs> so you already received now you are starting to give now you are an encouraging you are you are, god is saying hey i have encouraged you now go be an encourager in first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 11 let's turn there first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 11 this is to god's people children of god it says therefore encourage one another and build each other up as you are already doing amen so they are already doing it it's a, it's a good church in you know, the thessalonian church is a good church and so it says you know you are already doing this keep on doing it why do we need to encourage people answer is there only so we can do what what happens when we encourage people it's in the same verse people no it is in the same verse here only answer is there in the verse itself it's better to use scripture to answer our questions therefore encourage one another so what it will do it will build each other up yeah it will edify people in some bibles it says edify it will build people up it will build people up when i don't encourage people it will tear people down it will tear people down and that's the thing god wants us to be encouragers i mean you don't need to go to a bible college to be an encourager you don't need to have a lot of education to be an encourager you don't need all you need is to just just listen to god and say what is god's good plan for this person what god wants to do in this person's life a few weeks back one brother came he was talking all about what is not working in his life he was talking about oh man i prayed and this thing didn't happen and this happened this didn't happen he was all discouraged and i started because i knew him for some years so i started talking about what god has done in his life i said hey look back 10 years ago look back 5 years ago all those negative confessions he had made to me he said you know this will not work this will not happen in my life i am like this only i am like this only he said this all this so i started to remind him hey didn't you tell this and where are you today has not god done great things and he's like yes and the second point also said i i can't go into detail because it's a personal conversation and so and he, he, i said like hey in 2015 did you say didn't say this didn't you confess this one i remember when i spoke to you and has not got taken care of it and he said yes and he went with a joyful heart that that fear is gone that discouragement is gone because what we want to do is we want to encourage people to build each other up to build them up and that is the thing that will that's very hard for me to learn it's very hard for me to learn only when i when i bite a stone when i'm eating the food i'll feel like oh man this rice is so bad but i would have eaten that same rice for many years but when that stone comes once you know when i'm chewing on the food it's like i'm getting full of anger and that's the thing when we compliment people we'll say oh brother i don't want to encourage that person he he will become puffed up we have that no i want to speak the truth i will give only reality i will give only reality checks i don't want to encourage people and that's the thing but but we are so selfish in that because god is a god who is encouraging me day and night and i am not willing to give even little bit of encouragement to another person that's a very dangerous place to be in again it's like i am receiving all and i would do want to give and that's the thing dear brothers and sisters that we bible has called us children of god are called to encourage one another and i will tell you like you know if you are if you have a starting problem with encouragement i will give you some tips you know this is how i got started so it might be useful for you right and so the second thing is there's a gift of exhortation gift of exhortation romans chapter 12 verse 8 let him who exhorts exhort like you know um, romans chapter 12 <coughs> romans chapter 12 verse 8 right if exhorting in exhortation so that is one of the spiritual gifts it's like you know lord give me this gift of encouragement give me this gift of encouraging other people and also in 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 uh, in um, acts also chapter 14 and uh, chapter 11 and in chapter 4 also i will wrap up very quickly you know uh, it's already time 
is that there is this man called Barnabas. You know what is? His another name is he's a man of encouragement. His name itself is a man of encouragement. I mean, I want to meet uh, Barnabas. I want to get all the dialogues that he has. Brother, how do you encourage people, brother? How do you encourage other people? I mean, he used to go, you know, he used to go to places and he used to encourage people like anything, you know. And and uh, when people are down, you know, people they used to send uh, um, um, uh, send ba- uh, Barnabas and he'll start, you know, encouraging people. And in verse uh, chapter 11, verse 23, Acts chapter 11, verse 23, when Barnabas arrived, he saw the grace of God. He was glad and encouraged all of them to remain true to the Lord with devoted hearts. Again, he comes there, he, he, he comes there and he encourages people. In fact, Barnabas is one of the important men who brought Apostle Paul into ministry. Apostle Paul, you all know, Apostle Paul got converted on that road to Damascus and uh, he got a calling. And in three years, he went to Arabia and then he comes and like people reject him and he goes back to his hometown. He goes to Tarshish. That's where he was born because people rejected him. Nobody wanted Apostle Paul because they were afraid. The church was afraid of Apostle Paul because like, hey, may I, no, he's maybe a, he's a fake convert. Maybe he's trying to kill us by saying that Jesus name because he was a murderer, right? Apostle Paul murdered so many Christians. So, so he was sent back and you know who went and got Apostle Paul back? Barnabas. When he went to the church in Antioch, he goes and he knocks on, he, it says, the Bible says, he went to Tarshish to search for Paul. Who went in search of Paul? Barnabas. A man of encouraging man. A man of encouragement. So, my dear brothers and sisters, I mean, this, is a, this is a very crucial aspect of our life. You know, just like I spoke about humility, being humble, learning to be humble, we all can learn to be encouragers. We all can learn to be encouragers. And you know, you might say, okay, brother, where do I start? Where do I start to encourage people? How do I start to encourage people? I mean, just, just for people around us. People around us. I mean, your wife. I mean, how many times, you know, my wife has told me that I don't encourage her. <laughs> and I take it as a lesson. I want to learn. Better, huh, now? <laughs> I'm slightly better, I think. Better than where I was before. So, so like, you know, like, that's the thing. No, I'm blind. I'm blind in that thing. I'm ready to correct her. I'm ready to point the mistakes. But I'm not ready to encourage. See, that's the human nature in each one of us. So people around us, just, just small words. Start like this. Don't give up. Isn't it a word of encouragement? Definitely. If someone comes and says, hey, Don't give up. I mean, it's powerful. I mean, you don't need to quote scriptures like, you know, like, like, uh, 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 like, you know, as you've gone to a Bible college or something, just sing, just those three words, don't give up. The Bible says, you know, don't give up while doing good. In due time, you will, you you will reap if you don't lose heart. So it says, don't give up. That, that's just a powerful word of encouragement who needs it probably. And if God, God wants to, you, you're coming and you're, you're meeting someone and someone is going through something and you say, don't give up. I say, brother, stay strong in the Lord. And say, God's got you. God is for you. And you know, these are the small things. I used to write it down because I, I'm so dumb, right? I'm like, I'm so full of discouragement. I can, I'm very quick to po- correct people, but I don't. So I have to write down these words of encouragement. Like, like okay, see, here's something I've written from my notes here. Don't give up. God is for you. I appreciate you. You bless me. You are a blessing to me. And these are, I mean, these are simple words. But this will build people's life. This will change people's lives. I remember in year 2000, you know, I went to one uh, retreat in North Karnataka. And uh, in Hubli, uh, not Hubli, in, in, in Gangavati. There's a Gangavati, there was a youth retreat. So I, I spoke there. And then I was very young at that time, college time, you know, I spoke and then I, after that uh, retreat, you know, I, I got down from that stage and I met this brother. I mean, I was so full of fear that time. I mean, like standing in front of people and speaking in Canada, uh, so fe- full of fear. And then I came down and I met some brother. I encouraged him with some words. Okay. And I even forgot about it. 15 years later, he comes to me and says, I'm a pastor today. And I first, you know, met you at, at that stage and you gave me some encouragement. And I was like, wow, man, just this one word could change a person's life. And I'm like, Lord, how much people need 
encouragement how much do our people around us need encouragement and also the family members around us like you know there's this verse in first thessalonians chapter 4 or 2 i think you know as a father would encourage his children it says what would a father do a father would encourage his children you encourage them and that's the thing many times you know we are in a competitive world we make our children you know feel small like no you didn't get enough you know you got only 49 out of 50 where did you leave that one mark oh where did the two marks go where did the three marks go no but you got 47 and that's the thing fathers like you know trying to encourage them encouraging me hey, i'm there for you i will make my resources available for you isn't that what our heavenly father says to us i am there for you i will carry you i will make all my resources available for you i'll open doors for you and that's what god says to us every day we are receiving this encouragement and we can tell it to the people around us the day i was going to go home to pray in um, um in, in near chamrajpet area uh, that's home like we go as we are entering um the ground floor there is uh, the sister is taking us to her home in the first floor very narrow stairs and she's taking us and there's this guy who calls her is like hey ma enachi she said like hey what happened he said and she told uh, no no i will i will talk to you later and she went up and she went up and we went to that very small house five people in that small house like you know it's probably like like you know like uh, <laughs> very small five people living in that house and i go i sit there um i go sit there and she wow, she's been coming new to our church and then uh, i just go sit there like not even place to sit and she said brother you know why that uh, guy called me because i have not paid the rent of the house and i said like okay what do you work i said i work uh, i can't say see it's personal things i cannot say some things so she said i work from morning 3 am to night 9 pm so how many hours can you calculate 3 am to 9 pm she works and that's almost like how many 18 hours she's working and she's working and she doesn't have any profit she says i do this i stand there i sell on the street side i go i i'm a street hawker i sell all this i'm not getting any profit and she, my wife was there and she showed her one of her legs it's all twisted and like it's it's almost like the leg is half leg is gone why because 10 years ago her drunken husband beat her and abused her like anything and uh, he went on with another woman and he died 5 years later you know committing suicide so she 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 is 10 years ago she had to raise four children three boys and one girl and now those three boys when i started to coming to their home they ran away all bigger guys and you know, i wanted to meet those guys but they just ran away it's like no 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 i, I don't we don't want to listen to him we don't want to be there so i just was there me my wife and that sister and her her, uh, her, her daughter you know who's doing a data entry job and then going to a college very far away just to pay for that education and she has no money here and she has no money to pay rent so what does she need she needs the encouragement that's all all we did was just went there we didn't give money or we didn't go uh, preach big s- sermons there all we said hey god is for you now you turn to the lord you see what god's going to do in your life and that's the thing dear brothers and sisters people need encouragement i need encouragement our families need encouragement and i want to really like you know like uh, appreciate those women you know who are working like that you know because of all the things negative things that have happened in their life and there are so many people who are struggling like especially in the five in the morning when you wake up i hope you wake up <laughs> uh, when you wake up you know at five in the morning you see all these ladies who are walking on the streets like you know they are they are all busy there they are not even turning anywhere they are just walking and you know who they are they are maid servants they are maid servants you know who are working and and going to their houses that are supposed to go at 5 am they are going and they are trying to wash dishes and clean the homes and then come back home and cook and then take care of their children so many people so many women right in front of us and sometimes you know i want to stop them and say thank you thank you not because you did something for me thank you for what you do thank you for what you are doing for your family thank you for you carrying the burden of your family and even in our church you know people who come and serve us you know like i want to say thank you to them also thank you to the people who come and serve you know selflessly they could do so many things they could come you know 
late to church or whatever it is but they come early they come and they serve and they and they, and they play and they and and then they do the sound system and the and the and the and the, and, the, and, the, and the streaming and all these things people who come and watch the church and you know they need encouragement we want to say thank you to them also we want to say thank you to the mothers we want to say thank you to the fathers in in a cutthroat workplace and like you know competitive world you know we want to say thank you to them we want to appreciate for what they appreciate them for what they do you know many of our fathers you know they might not have been perfect but at least we can appreciate them for what they do because they're trying to do their best they can that's all you know we, we, nobody has a perfect father but at least we can appreciate them for what they did because based on their light based on the faith that they had based on their ability they did the best they could and we can appreciate them for that so tell people don't give up tell people that everything is going to be all right tell people come let's pray tell them tell them come let's pray they they tell you the things you know tell them let's come come let's pray that is an encouragement being people you know especially being with people who are in addiction young people today you know how many people need you know many times we use this big words called counseling uh, 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 fasting prayer and uh, uh the, this and that on a big big words we use yes we need prayer we need counsel but they need someone who comes near them first that's the thing we just have to go to that addicted person put my hand around that addicted person and say you're going to come out of it god's going to help you other day one guy came and he said and i got into this bad habit i want to come and i'm praying in my spirit saying lord how can i help him i mean this guy has been is is an addiction for such a long time how can i help him and you know he needs someone to walk with him that's all <laughs> he needs someone to walk with him and he said ana i'm getting better i'm getting better i'm getting better because he knows there's someone for him he knows that someone is there to listen to him so many young people need today someone who listen to them not give directions not point fingers and say ka ah, you are bad you know i mean we need people who spend time with them and even i am sometimes guilty you know like i could be busy with work and 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 my ministry and serving other people and ignore my own son ignore my own daughter but the, knowing that the greatest thing she needs is not my instructions not my directions not my commands but she needs me she needs my time and that's the thing when you give time for people if you know someone is addicted just call them and say hey how are you doing i want to encourage you i got this verse today i was reading the scripture today morning and i want to encourage you with the scripture and i want to do this and and this is encouragement dear brothers and sisters and we can do we can all be encouragers we can all do this we can all and i've seen many times when you encourage people their whole personality changes their whole face changes their whole attitude towards life changes everything changes in their life because you started to give the word of god because a word a powerful man of god or woman of god who standing a child of god is starting to speak the words of god and it's going to have its impact on that other person it's going to have you can call it whatever it is a prophetic word or a prophecy or whatever it is but it's going to have an impact but don't just do it without your heart in it that's the thing many times you know sometimes we prophesy but not even just just knowing anything about that person but walk with that person prophesy daily prophesy over that person and say hey i have been praying for you this is what god speaking to me hey come let's go pray don't give up today it's all right and all these things you know when we when we are when we are also involved in those people not being very detached but being involved in people's lives to to love them and to care for them and tell them to not give up because we have a god who's doing that to us every day every moment he's doing that so two things we saw today remember we have a god who's encouraging me every moment we have the scripture that is encouraging us so god is calling us to be encouragers so but is it going to come naturally no like me you probably have to write down some <laughs> some things like don't give up god is for you i appreciate you you are a blessing god's got you and and things like that you know start you know start learn learn to be an encourager start with your family members go tell your wife today <laughs> that's the hardest place to start i know so start with your friends i know you can start with friends and then end with your wife and end with your wife or husband i mean sisters have a gift of uh, 
being good encouragers. It's brothers, you know, who have a lot of learning. So we need a PhD. Sisters just can go to high school in encouragement and they can finish. So let God encourage you today. Allow him to encourage you so that you can be an encouragement. Okay? And you can build each other up. That's how we build God's church. That's how we become a people of God. When we start to encourage one another. Same thing. It's so blessed to give than to receive. Who said that? Jesus said that. So, Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this morning. We thank you for your blessed assurance. We thank you for your encouragement, Lord. Every moment, Lord, in our darknesses, in our storms, in our pain, in our suffering, in our lowest point in life, in our failure, you have brought us so far, Lord. You have encouraged us. Thank you, Lord. I thank you for what you do. Heavenly Father, Lord, we invite you today into our hearts. Spirit of God, you fill us. Fill us with your love. Fill us with your kindness and gentleness. Lord, help us to also, Lord, as we learn encouragement from you, as we receive that gift of encouragement from you, help us to be encouragers. Help us to build people up. Help us to lift people up, Lord. Lord, thank you, Lord, that you have been with us through everything. Thank you that you are going to be with us and thank you that you are going to be with people who we meet, Lord, on a daily basis. Lord, I pray that your spirit of encouragement would be poured out abundantly, Lord, on each one of us. Help us to learn from you, Lord. Help us to look to Jesus and learn. Help us to look at people's lives, how you touch people's life through your encouraging word. We commit each dear brother and sister into your hands. Anybody who is discouraged here, Lord, I pray, Lord, Holy Spirit, that you come and touch them. That they will not listen to their fears, but they will be of good cheer and take courage as Jesus Christ has told us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence this morning. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen.